I see it. Okay. Okay, people. So I am joined by Todd Max Carey, who is the writer, director. I think you edited it. I mean, you wore a lot of hats with this. But yes, we're here to talk about Touch Kink, your new documentary. So um, yeah, Todd, thank you very much for uh, stopping by. I really appreciate that. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Appreciate the opportunity to chat. Yeah, yeah. No, this this is interesting, right? Because I think there's, you know, you hear certain words a lot, right? So you hear kinks being thrown around and there's been different shows that are like, you know, have characters or, you know, there was a Netflix series. I think it was called Bonding or something like that about yeah. a dominatrix. And, yeah. Yeah, so, but there's not a lot that gives you an actual kind of breakdown of what it is, you know, a look at, you know, the people who are part of that community and the different aspects of it and all of that. So, yeah, what was it that kind of brought you to putting all of this together? Well, it's funny, funny before we uh, started recording, we were talking about how sometimes it's just necessary to start, you know, do something. And uh, a number of years ago, I met a lovely lady that, you know, over the space of the conversation uh, revealed to me that she was a dominatrix. And, you know, my ears peaked up a little bit because as a lot of people may, it's it's a bit of a caricature, a little bit of a, everyone thinks they know what this person's going to be like. And it was quite a shock because this was one of the sweetest, nicest persons I'd ever met. I thought maybe kindergarten teacher or something like this. And then I realized, you know, and she explained more and more and very patiently explained it to me and, and got sort of lamented the fact of all the misconceptions people have that a lot of people in the, the kink realm are sort of looked upon as less than or other or weird or strange and, she was none of those things. In fact, as I said, she could have been a kindergarten teacher. And it was fascinating to me that I caught myself having those same misconceptions. You know, it's, 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 I guess it's an old story. Um, people are afraid of people or things they don't understand. Hmm. And sometimes when they understand them, they should be afraid of them. Uh, other time, but most of the time, um, it's just intolerance. It's misunderstanding. It's, cliches you know there's bad people whether they're used car salesmen or politicians probably more on politicians on my point but anyway uh <laughs> you know so it just it just story became fast so we decided that night after eight hours that we're going to make a documentary about the misconceptions and the myths that people had and then the film sort of evolved from that because that that was interesting and i think we covered that fairly well and as i got into it i, I actually went to corners of that community that I wouldn't normally go to and explored things that, you know, weren't normally part of it. And I started finding this sort of common denominator through it. And, and it really, I wanted to share that with people to let them understand. I actually think that not only kink, not only is kink, not a bad thing, it's actually preferred, not kink per se, but the, the ethics the meta, uh, methodology behind it of simply, hey, I'm not going to make any assumptions about your gender or anything. I'm going to ask you, hey, are you a he or she? Are you a, how do you want to be addressed? The kind, you know, just just starting from tabula rasa with people and and getting to know them, and it just seemed like a really good message for the general public as well. Is that no matter what you do, whether it's kink or anything else, just you know, start off with an open mind talk to that person get that get get to understand what they're about what they like and see if you can't come to some sort of uh agreement whether that's to play something kinky or just to go okay we'll we'll agree to disagree on politics you know whatever but just take that time and get to know people and i just thought that was such a beautiful thing and i it was a bit unexpected so the documentary became more about that okay i mean what was your kind of understanding of kink before you started this I think my understanding was that, you know, some people, you know, like to be spanked. And I I had known that 
you know, um, more in a classical sort of somewhat heteronormative sense that men, you know, often were dominant and women often like to be submissive, but, you know, you had to, um, you know, have a few conversations, but that was kind of it. And then I was surprised to see how many men actually like to be submissive as well and how many people actually don't even think about gender at all, actually. It's not really about gender. I mean, a lot of these conversations we're having now about gender politics and stuff are, are kind of less relevant for the kink community because sometimes it's i don't really care or they don't really care necessarily about a gender it's the it's the fetish it's, it's a foot it's a a butt it's a you know <laughs> you know and that's the focus of their 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 attention so it's, it's sort of a, almost a post in some cases a post-gender conversation so uh, it was just such a fascinating world and you know, I really only scratched the surface. I mean, there's so much material, so much. I mean, everybody has their own thing and it's sort of beautiful too. Mm, mm. Now, do you think like some of the misconceptions, because when you think about King, right, what we've been shown on TV a lot of time is like, you know what I mean? It, it's not just a simple kind of... Uh, you know, someone likes foot feet and foot rubs. It's more of like furries and you know what I mean? Like the the far end of things kind of fit. You know what I mean? Because I remember there was an episode of CSI. I was on a plane and it was just flicking through. So it's just like, eh, all right, I'll throw that on. And they were dealing with a murder and they went to a house mm -hmm. and they're like, Well, where's the body? And they're like, Oh, through there. They're like, where? And there's this secret room. And it was all set up like a baby's room. And so there's a big cot and there was a guy in a nappy in this cot. And then later in the episode, they ended up at a furry convention. And so it was all of that, mm -hmm. which is just like, you know, for, for someone looking in, it's just like, wait, why is someone dressed up in a nappy? And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. why are you dressed up in a you know a dog costume like mm -hmm. what, what you know rather than you know just people like different things and this is this and this is that it's kind of being thrown at the public as this kind of far extreme kind of occupation as it were well humans have a long history of trying to subjugate other humans and one of the best ways to do that is to sort of control them make them feel guilty about certain things and to stretch it you know um sometimes people have valid points that the people maybe the community isn't ready to hear at the point but they they express it nicely a great example is you know rest in peace Sinead o'connor about you know she did make a valid point that you know there was issues with the church at the time nobody wanted mm. to hear it, and her career suffered um the community does the establishments that exist tend to try to destroy in any way anybody that sort of differs so i think uh you know in the old day there i mean that you can go back to movies in the 50s and 60s and they would say there was a homosexual element to the murder you know somehow making mm -hmm. it seem that if you were gay you were more likely to be a murderer now that's long since gone um, but there's still a little bit, oh, there's a sadomasochistic or there's a BDS, you know, but that's not what we're talking about. We're mm. talking about something consensual, something else. Doesn't matter how someone dressed, doesn't matter what they like, doesn't matter what their kinks are. What we're talking about is, are you doing it ethically or not? Because what we're talking about in the, the, the modern kink community is, is ethical behavior. You know, so it's less about that kind of sensationalist, somebody wearing a nappy or something like that that's not kink that's just a me somebody trying to get some attention for their subject or trying to push back uh against a community uh what we're talking about is is doing it in a far more um ethical manner but i do think there are powers that be that do want these things to sort of manipulate to, to control people make them feel guilty i mean i don't understand this whole well, why people are so upset about the woke thing why not just celebrate the diversity you know, mm. people are happy and they want to present this way or learn this way or have these ideas. Great. All great. Long as, you know, we 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 are consensual about it and we're ethical about it and we're uh, open about it. I, I don't understand why there's an argument at all over any of this stuff. You know, uh, people should be allowed to express themselves, but people want to go. They're weird because they wear 
furries. Oh, that's weird. You know, oh, that's woke or that's, you know, it's just such a silly thing that's going on. And I would like humans to recognize we have far more in common than we realize. We just like different things and we should focus more on respecting each other, talking to each other, understanding each other. And genuinely not just like, okay, you're weird because you have, uh, you like furries. I, was like, I don't care. You could be a great person, you know? Mm. So, well, I, I think sometimes it's the terminology that mm -hmm. we use for things. Sure. You know, everything's branded in a certain way. Like BDSM, right? Because it's sadomasochism is mm -hmm. the SM. Mm -hmm. And when you, you know, go back in time, sadomasochism was, you know, in a film, someone being tortured and that yeah. kind of thing. So sure. then... Adding those words sure. to this, it, it's probably not the best. It's like when you look at, you know, if you just participate in, I, I think the more known sexual maneuvers, let's mm -hmm. say, that's often, you know, references vanilla, right? And, and you think about like, but this is probably not the, the best term because when you break it down, there's a load of people that will do things that, you know, possibly you might go, mm, is that vanilla? You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, there's a little element that they like, like some people like a, you know, a finger up the bum, mm -hmm. right? You know what I mean? But they don't want to be pegged necessarily, but mm -hmm. they enjoy a finger up the bum. So mm -hmm. that you wouldn't say that's straight vanilla. But it's just, it's a spectrum of things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I think we throw these terms around, mm -hmm. probably not the best to be able to create an environment where we just embrace everything because everyone's then in these camps and it's just like, well, I mean, I like this, so I must be in that camp. And, oh, well, I don't like that. You know, I have no interest mm -hmm. in that. When it's just like... I look at, I try and look at these things like with music and mm -hmm. literature and other stuff, mm -hmm. right? There's a certain things I don't, I don't like, I don't enjoy, but I don't really care if you do, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's just like, Hey, you might like, um, the, the, the torture, mm -hmm. I, I call it torture porn, um, horror, you know, like the saw mm -hmm. films and, you know, where they're like, Ah, doing all mm -hmm, that crazy mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm, to people mm -hmm. that's not necessarily my thing but i'm not gonna be like god todd i cannot talk to you because you mm -hmm. like sore mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. it's just like we will we don't talk about that we talk about the other things we both enjoy mm -hmm. and share an interest yeah. in and i think that's what it should be you know that's, and i, I, think I mean i could i couldn't agree with you more that. and i think that that's the kind of attitude that I hope people have or more people have, because in the end, it's not, a, again, it's not about any given kink or any given uh, aspect of something you may find of interest. It's always about the same thing. Are you doing this in a way that's compassionate? Are you doing this in a way that's respectful? Are you doing it in a way that's consensual? And are you making sure that person is okay after? It's almost like a it's a little bit geeky, really. It's almost like the scientific approach to whatever. Uh, gee, I've always wanted to, you know, wear a wear a, a teapot on my head and and do this. Okay, I don't know how I feel about it, and then do this thing with the teapot on my head. And at the end of it, like, yeah, I felt weird about the teapot. I don't think I want to do that again. Or oh my god, that was the best thing ever. I'm going to always have a teapot. Mm. You know, it it doesn't. It's experimental. It allows us that safe space to try new things and be creative. And I honestly believe that diversity and creativity stem from this kind of open-mindedness and that creativity and that diversity is going to win the future. I actually believe that. I think that's why it's starting to loosen up a little bit because if you look at the history of the world, all the greatest things were invented by people that were more open-minded The more, mm. maybe they didn't like it. Like you said, it's not my cup of tea, but they're not going to like throw them in jail for wanting to wear a teacup on their head. It's like, okay, you're weird, but you know, you're eccentric, whatever. But I mean, you look at peop the, the people that invented the modern world and pretty much every single one of them 
uh, including Da Vinci, it was recently come out, was was arrested for acts against God at one point. Uh, you know, obviously saved by the Medici's, and that was that. But uh, name him, uh, Alan Turing. Uh, a gay man yeah. that was living outside of invents the computer, you know, and gets chemically castrated for his effort. You know, it, these kinds of beautiful minds, creative, diverse minds think like you and and hopefully the people who see the movie just be a little bit more open. You don't have to love it. Just be a little bit more open to it. As long as people do whatever they do in a respectful, consensual manner, you know, full speed ahead. Mm. No, definitely. Definitely. And, where did you come up with the idea of structuring the documentary in the way you did? Because you broke it down into those different aspects of like a, a, a kink session, say, because I'd never heard of aftercare. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's an interesting thing because you just look like in the past, you see, you know, someone and they're like, oh, I go to a dominatrix. I like to be trodden on, kicked, whipped, whatever, whatever. But you never hear about the aftercare aspect of it, which then I think it adds a new level to this. Right. Well, because it always it's actually see the compassion. Yeah. Well, the thing about aftercare that, I, that I've discovered and it actually came from a dominatrix actually told me once and you don't really think about the dominatrix giving aftercare but she'd always noticed at the end of a session where say it was a humiliation session and some guy had gone through this process and you know really gone down and really like humiliated or whatever sort of as he's leaving the session he would often sort of do a slight insult and mm -hmm. she would they would often let it she'd let it go because that was basically his aftercare it was kind of like him getting ready to go back into the world so it's there all the time in some in some cases it's far more obvious and profound where it's like cuddling but it the main there's two main messages for me in the film is that kink is great if you do it if you follow the circle that's why the o in the thing is a circle of about you know lots of negotiation lots of talk you know having a very positive affirmative consent doing whatever you do and then checking in with that person that's what closes the circle and to me, that's the biggest difference between abusive activities or non-abusive activities. Abuse is I do what I want to you and then they screw you. Yeah. You know, where you could do the exact same activity in a consensual scene, but it's a circle because you're coming back. And how was that? I know that maybe that was too Was that good? Was that right for you? That's it. You know, and it was obviously negotiated and all the rest of it. So I just wanted to make sure people realize that circle. If they remember nothing else, that there's this circle. The, the thing that makes it okay to do this stuff uh, is that circle of trust, you know? And if you can follow that circle of trust, you know, maybe you try it once and never do it again, or maybe you'll have a positive experience and try new things and keep experimenting. So it became very important to me to sort of part, make that very much part of the DNA of the movie uh, that, you know, you have to think about what do people remember? And I was, I'm hoping people remember that. I'm hoping people remember trust is key and trust and compassion you know mm, mm. the irony of all of that is though like that's a part of all things it is absolutely right yeah. it, it is like be. yeah yeah exactly. yeah when you meet you know your partner and you've been dating yeah. a while like just the dating itself it's just like hey um i was thinking we could go on a hike do you mm -hmm. What do you think about that? And be like, I don't normally hike. But yeah. I'll I'll give it a go. I mean, like, okay, well, just tell me when mm -hmm. is too much and we can stop. You right. know what I mean? Or it's like when you first Absolutely. You know, get intimate together, it's like, okay, is this too much pressure? Do you like to be touched here? Like, how is this? Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. like this? Like you're asking, you you know, I say you asking, not everyone, but I think you should be asking questions, finding yeah. out what's pleasurable to someone, what yeah. works. Okay. Is that okay? And you'd be like, Oh, well, I'll try it. Be like, ah, I, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy that. Or that didn't really bring me the pleasure. I thought it would be like, okay, we won't do that. We'll try something different. You know what I mean? So it's just like, although it's broken down in, in like this environment in the kink world, 
and you look at it and be like, oh, I've never seen it broke down like that. When you think about it, we do, we do or should be doing these things in Absolutely. every aspect of life. I did not, I didn't invent any of these things. I, they just, re, they were reinforced uh, by, you know, working with the King community on this film. And and it, the other, the other big thing for me, you know, I grew up in a generation where the the rules kind of changed. There was a time where my, I think my father literally said, I don't know how you're supposed to deal with women anymore. I mean, like, cause he grew up in a time where men are supposed to be cowboys and women are supposed to be conquered. And yeah was it and it seemed very and and both sides of that equation seemed to more or less follow the rules uh or those that culture but that's it's all falling apart now and it's a good thing and it's all being put back together and a lot of people are confused about well how am i how am i supposed to behave can i can i never slap a woman on the bum anymore can i never hey say whatever and I wanted to make it, everything is still on the table. All you got to do is have a few more conversations. Hey, my name is, I like this. You like this, you know, let's have a conversation. Mm. Do you like being slapped on the bum? You know, and, and if I get permission to slap her on the, it doesn't mean anybody else has. So like, you know, okay, great. She, you know, so it's, everything is still there. All you have to do is just be sure that you're, everybody's on the same page and you're going to avoid lawsuits and all the rest of it. Mm. And I, I often find, of conversations lately about how people think, oh, it's so complicated, all this talking, and oh my God, I just, you know, I just want to get laid or whatever. And it seems really like, oh, it's just too much. You know, I just, you know, I want to get what I want. And I said, you don't understand. Yeah. Okay. Maybe there's a bit more talking. But if you're so fixated on one thing, say you just want to get laid, and that person that you really are attracted to and you've got a conversation with and you've got some, something and you decide that you're not going to get laid and you walk away. Well, isn't, why don't you just keep that conversation? Well, what do you like? Do you like cuddles? Do you like, have you ever tried shibari? Uh, do you like, uh, you know, uh, watching a naughty movie and whatever, whatever, just a little bit of cuddling or something. And like, so there's, there's instead of walking away because you don't get X, which is mm. what you want immediately, you could be missing out on A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, you know what I mean? And the funny thing is if you, you know, start with A and then do B. Those, the, and there might be a whole bunch of other things you've never even heard about that you're really going to enjoy, different kinks. And Kel Surprise, you might actually end up getting X at some point. If you like someone enough to really be pushing for X, give them the time and space and have those conversations about other things other than X that might bring you together as well. And if you don't know what those other things are, start reading about kink. Because <laughs> <You know, laughs> everyone's got them. You know, mm. for a lot of women, it's, uh, you know, they want a foot massage, you know, uh, uh, and if you really like her that much, maybe uh, that's a way to start building that trust and building that intimacy and getting to know each other. So uh, I think kink, it may seem a little bit more intense at the beginning, but ultimately you're going to get to know people on a much deeper level and a much more honest level because there's so much that people have hidden about themselves and they're embarrassed about. But kink gives you that space to say whatever you want to say you know however you want to be i'm a free by day uh, i'm, a, I'm a, uh whatever by night and i like to do a third thing on the weekends you know and that's cool you know and you find people that you find your community for that so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, again it all comes back to just being open and and happy and experimental and not to be afraid of the world just be consensual just have those conversations and and bring the space you know, let let our society have the space for those conversations where men can. Oh, maybe I want to try my feminine side. Maybe I want to try my, you know, whatever. Give people space for that. Um, you know, we grew up, I mean, shows like Ted Lasso now where it's like, okay, for men to cry. I mean, that's a fairly big thing lately. You know, you think about it, we're, we're what, we're 2020 or 2023. And uh, it's now like for some people okay for men to cry publicly <laughs> you know <laughs> like big progress you know we're <laughs> still got a long ways to go to fully express and uh, people need those safe spaces and people need those that connection to truly develop further you know and i think kink offers a map um a road map on how to do this but as you said at the beginning it it, it is something a lot of people do instinctually about going on a hike but weirdly enough, on interpersonal relationships, it's more like trying to just climb, conquer a mountain than it is. There's a difference between climb, going on a hike, which you talked about, and that's how kink is. And some people are like, I'm going to conquer this mountain. 
And it's like the mountain mm. is almost inanimate. It's just a thing to be conquered, you know? Uh, and that seems to be the old idea. And we have to get back. We have to get to the, let's go on a hike more than let's climb a mountain. Yeah, I, th I think that there's so many issues in society that could be averted yeah. through conversation, yeah. right? And I think when you look at school curriculums and yeah. all the different things that are being taught, why the hell isn't just conversation, communication skills? Why is that not a you know a, a a component that runs throughout your schooling time you know because it just every aspect of communication so communicating with friends communicating with a loved one communicating with your parents getting learning how to communicate in the workplace does all the different types of communication there's, you know, there was a, a few years back you were hearing about, they were talking about consent in schools, which is fine. But talk about just communication as a whole, because it's not just, uh, hey, can I, um, you know, suck on your breasts? Mm -hmm. You know, can I, you know, hug you? Can I? No, it's just like, hey, you know, what do you like? You know, what kind of um, communication style do you enjoy? Right. Do you want, you know, I know we're just starting dating. So, hey, do you want to keep the, qu the the conversation light or do you mind in depth questions and like, you know, like just break it down for people. And then once people know how to communicate, you won't get like, I think. A lot of kind of just hate crimes and things like that. Okay will be they won't be gone just because we're humans right but mm -hmm. they they won't be as bad because people will be like oh instead of calling that person a name why don't I just ask them about hey um what I, I i see you're holding that book and you you've got that mat what does that mean what's that mm -hmm. to do with your religion i don't get it and you're like okay well yeah you know five times a day we we turn the mat and we pray to mm -hmm. you know what i mean and you're like oh mm -hmm. okay you know and it's just conversation instead of going hey, look at that weird person you yeah. know what i mean and and we're think, tribal we're tribal by yeah. nature and uh what we're really trying to do is expand the tribe to include all humans i've often thought if the aliens arrived or mars suddenly it'd be one harmonious family of humans all working together uh, suddenly there'd be world peace among humans in a day we'd unify and have to fight the little green men you know it's it, tribes form because they want to protect whatever interests they want to enforce whatever rules and and manipulate the people in the tribe. The, the tribal leaders want to manipulate the people in the tribe. And, uh, you know, what happens as nations grow is they expand the definition of what's allowed in our tribe. And, okay, if you're educated, you're allowed in our tribe. Or if you're hmm. out of money, you're allowed in your tribe. You know, in the old days, it was a lot about race. And now it's more about money. <laughs> you know, like, okay, you're rich, you're in our tribe. We don't care about anything. You know, it's like, tribalism forms around whatever it forms around but it's always us guess against them you know uh and it's unfortunate i would i would love to see and i think it will bode well in the future if people will give people the space to to talk about why they do the things or or not judge them and ask like okay why do you why what's the significance of turning the, the 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 rug or the the carpet five times like why do you what is that why you know please i'm curious you know like hmm. why why uh, certain people do the rosary like what you know what yeah. is there's a beauty in a lot of these things as well and you just have to find out what it's all about rather than going oh you're weird because you you're saying hail mary all the time you know uh, mm. it, it, it's just giving people that space there's a thing there's a concept called the overton window which is sort of what's allowed in any given society at any given time. And the most interesting thing about the Overton window is it has been more open and has been more closed to what's acceptable in any given culture and society. So it's completely basically arbitrary. It just kind of opens or closes depending on what's going on in the conversation. And our, and our 
per current one is almost becoming like two Overton windows. There's like an Overton window, which is being allowed to talk about on one political end and another, and they're they're not even overlapping anymore. Which no. is a little scary. Yeah, that, that is a, a big thing. Uh, one thing I was very curious about with this was how did you create the trust for the amount of access that you had got? Well, the, the dominatrix I first met um, vouched for me, basically. Um, she It's a community that you need uh, to be vouched for. You need that trust. It's a community that has a longstanding tradition of not outing anybody. So once you're in and somebody vouches for you, it was all the doors opened. Um, I was actually even, I was genuinely surprised by the openness that I'd had. Like one person that wanted to do their interview, you know, without revealing their identity because they were a national security person in the American government. You know, mm -hmm. that was it. That was the only and You know, that prob prob person probably wouldn't have done any interview <laughs> anyway. And so it's it's about trust. And that's why it was important how, for, for me and that, you know, people feel that I didn't violate the trust. And I, I was very careful about getting people's permission and consent about everything because it is just about trust and 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 building on that trust and uh, one thing leads to another I ended up interviewing over 150 people that uh, bared their souls to me it's a lot of people yeah well <laughs> seven years to do the damn thing mm. uh, so well a year and a half of filming and then uh, covid and everything else but yeah yeah how did you work out like the narrative of the story so you knew what interviews you're going to use and what elements to leave when did all of that become clear to you uh it, it it's really was just a question of um you know when i started with 100 or so interviews i followed up on people and then maybe 25 of those that's had something happen then I followed up on those and maybe five of those had had something happen. So I basically just made the main narrative around people that had something happen to them through the thing. Well, one lady was had problems with the police and, uh, you know, another person, you could sort of see their relationship with their with their dom and uh, another person who was like curious about kink and wasn't really sure what, you know, they, 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 were, they were just things that had the natural arc. Mm. So as as I filmed and as it went forward the ones that had more of a story were the ones that uh were kept in there's more of an arc so okay that one. yeah i you mentioned uh the 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 trouble with the police because that was amusing that was amusing because um yeah goddess was evil evil Lynn? line yeah evil line right she lived where i grew up <laughs> and when she said that i was like oh god damn yeah i remember hearing about that <laughs> <laughs> so i was just like oh shit okay yeah, 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 yeah. i remember that a few years back <laughs> yeah 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 it was i mean she was weirdly enough one of the i think the interviews on the first day I had met her and then it was like months later that this happened. I think I made two or three, three trips to England. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was, it was one of the more interesting stories that happened. Yeah. <laughs> I I did. There's, there was a couple of, I think at least a couple of um, some, the, the conversations where it, I think sometimes we make like an assumption that oh this is when it's just like eh, but we don't necessarily have to tell people everything right because I think when she was talking she's just like oh, I couldn't believe everyone in the neighborhood was you know turning on me but be just before she said that she was like well I mean I rented out the house to a, a porn company for a porn shoot and it's just like well yeah you know, if, if you you come home and they're shooting a porno, you might think, hold on, I've got my kids. I don't really want that to. That was inside. I think they had had, there was a bit of drama bit that was shot outside the set. But Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, no. But the people would think that, 
right? That's the that's the sure. assumption you would be like, oh, my my, my kids around a bird and you're shooting porno. Th like the fact it's not it's not actually happening outside the house and no one's actually going to see anything. Mm -hmm. But like the thought of that happening next door to you isn't always going to be the most appealing. Sure. Sure. So it's a bit like I think if you if you were gonna do that, you you'd have to do it in a way where no one's gonna know what that thing is. You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, you think if I'm gonna do this and people find out, they're not gonna be happy. So it's just like, ah, I mean, I can see why people weren't necessarily happy with that. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then um... I, I try to be just honest about what happens. I mean, I, mm. I, I it's probably apparent that I, I think kink's good, but I also, uh, you know, try to be honest about what happens, you know, and yeah. take it the way they want to take it, you know? No, that I think that's the interesting thing. Just let people talk, right? And you can get that viewpoint of what they're saying. Because I was interested in Cupcake because he was talking about his relationship with his mom. Mm -hmm. And the fact his mum didn't really want to talk about what he did, mm -hmm. like he his um, preference on the kink side of things. And it was curious because I'm just a bit like, does she need to, though? Mm -hmm. You know well, what I mean? Him, because it's, it's like, like for him, it was like, you know, if he'd come out as gay to his mother, she would have been cool with that. Does she need to know that either? But his no. sexual identity was, you know, to be a submissive man, to be a slave to a dominatrix. That was his, you know, for him, it was, 